Hi guys, I've been shooting my own food photography for as long as I've been writing about food. Apart from cooking, it is one of my big passions. So I've teamed up with the guys from Canon to create brilliant food photography videos to help you create brilliant food imagery. Even if you don't have a giant shiny studio with the right equipment used perfectly, you can create some beautiful food photography. So here are my five top tips on how to do just that. On a shoot day, I'll work through maybe four to 10 different setups. And when you're doing this, it's really important to plan. By planning, I mean drawing a little diagram, thinking through what your composition is going to be. So that can be anything between your plate, your food, how it's going to look, the fabrics you're gonna use, the props, all those different elements. Even if you're only shooting at home, choosing the right spot to do your food photography is really important. For me, I shoot in only natural light, so I try and find a north-facing window, one that has an even stream of light throughout the day where I won't be interrupted by big bursts of sunshine. Once you have your spot picked out, it's time to get the setup right. I normally start out with a table so that I can place my food on. I normally stick a backboard up so I can shoot against that. And I'll also stick up a black sheet of material so that I have a controllable space of light. At this point, I'll also set up my tripod, stick on my camera, and get ready to take the shot. These are my extendable poles, and I've been using them only recently. Normally, I just stick up a black sheet whatever way I can, but they're really handy. They're not too expensive. So now, I'm left with this really nice little light box, which allows me some negative fill, and it means that I can manipulate the light the way I want to. I also keep a little tray of utensils. This will include oils, sprays with a little bit of water in it, sea salt, black pepper, all those little extras that can create those lovely garnishes right at the end of the food shot. This pavlova is pretty well behaved compared to most food that you have, but you still have to make sure that you're choosing food that looks good on camera and that you're making sure that it's nicely layered up. And I'm about to build it up with more cream and some berries on top. Once you've got your setup right, it's time to get some food involved. So just before the food arrives, I tend to take some test shots and this can be the point where you compose your shot. I've got a little napkin I'm gonna add in here and I also have a cake slice. So it's at this point that you can kind of compose the shot. You can make sure that you have everything in place so that when the food arrives, you're ready. So uh, these are the last little touches and these are the final things you do just before you take the photo so that nothing wilts, nothing looks sad or miserable. And right now it's looking pretty good. So for some final mint touches. When I'm shooting food, I tend to shoot five different angles, and this is really to make sure that I cover all my options. The first setup is what I like to call my hero shot, the one that kind of looks over everything that's in the image, takes in the plate, takes in the food, takes in the overall atmosphere of the shot, the story I'm trying to tell. After I've got that and I'm happy with it, I'll move on to a closer version of that. So I'm gonna do one final shot, an overhead one. This overhead shot has become extremely popular and by doing this overhead shot, you get another option and it's a completely bird's eye view on what you're looking at. Sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't. It depends on what you're shooting. The final two shots I like to take are for safety. I like to go in really close, a nice close up on whatever food I'm shooting and I also take a landscape shot so that I can use it for YouTube or online. One of the biggest questions I get asked about my food photography is how you get that soft focus background and that really crisp foreground. To do that, I keep my f-stop really nice and low, not too low because otherwise it can go out of focus. I also keep my ISO right down to 100 and I adjust the shutter speed accordingly. When you first start shooting food photography, I think the tendency is to take far too many photos. And this is fine because it helps you to learn what works and what doesn't. But as you start to hone your skills, it's really important to try and get the composition right so you're taking less images. This will mean less time spent editing the images and really focusing on getting that one true brilliant shot. So to sum it up, less is more. Once you have really good food images, it's time to make them sing. And the editing process at this point is really important. Take your time choosing the very best images and you can use software that's provided with the camera or use something like Lightroom where you can adjust them and develop them and really take them to the next level. This is the shot once I've finished editing it, but once you click split screen, you can see the difference between the two shots. On this side, it's a much cleaner and crisper uh, image that has been balanced in terms of the color like this one is kind of blown out It's got this orange hue to it. So I've changed the temperature a little bit I've also brought up the brightness the contrast really played around with it until I have a really clear and very vibrant image I'm really happy with that for more food photography tips and tricks Make sure to subscribe to this channel check out the full list of Canon equipment I use in the box below and of course get out there and get snapping